So the next thing we're being asked to do is to insert a new column after the charity column. Now, the charity column isn't necessarily identified in terms of its sheet, so we're going to have to go looking for that. Now, they do only use charity in one column, so if they do give you something like this in the exam, just be aware it will be a unique column reference. It then says in cell C3, we need to use a function to look up the charity name and an appropriate label in C2. So let's have a look to see how we would do that. Now over here, if we need to have a new column after the charity column, we want to go to column C, right click on the C and press insert. That's going to give us a column after column B, which is where charity is. Now I'm actually going to get rid of these extra ones at the top and you can see here the delete doesn't work and that's because we already have a filter on there. So what you are going to need to do is to remove the filter. Now you're going to find that um, up here and if we go into, um, you can maybe have a look in table design, um, we've got a header row up there. If you take out the header row, that will also remove the filter. So here we are now auction data on uh, row one and our actual headers on uh, row two. That means that cell C3 is actually going to make sense to us. Now it says here that cell C3 needs to look up the charity name. Now the charity name exists inside the charity sheet, which means we need a V lookup. A vertical lookup is going to allow us to take that charity code. And you can see here in the newer versions of Excel, you'll get this at column. Now, because of the way that our exam works, you need to make sure this is done manually. So I'm going to type in B3. So equals B3, um, I'm going to select this uh, table here and you can see it then does underscore 173 charity which again is another feature of the updated Excel so you're going to have to write this in manually so the name of our sheet is 173 charity to get to the then the cell references we put an exclamation mark and we give our cell reference so in this case a2 to b4 after that we want a comma then we're going to put a number two because our data is in column two of the table we've just identified. And we're going to put false because this is not in alphabetical order. Now, the other thing that I am going to do in here is I'm going to have a look at A2 and B4 and consider the types of referencing that we have. Um, so you can see here our table array is going from A2 to B4, but because I don't want this to move, I'm going to make it an absolute cell reference by putting in a dollar. Now, another thing that we're going to find is that um, in column C, this has now been pasted all the way down the column um, because this is the new version of Excel trying to assist us. So I'm going to get rid of that from the top. You can see there, that we have um, everything in its correct place because we used an absolute cell referencing. It should work all the way down. And then just to be sure, I'm going to pull that all the way down. And this is what you would normally do is to grab that little square and replicate all the way down that column. Now across um, the top, we're also going to need to have um, our heading. So it says here, insert an appropriate label in C2. This doesn't matter what it is as long as it is meaningful. So because of what it's holding, I have put in charity name. So let's do a quick recap. In order to look up data in another table, specifically because we're working in columns, we are going to use a V lookup. If you're working where data is in rows, you would use an H lookup, which is a horizontal lookup. You might have to write 
uh, the sheet name manually in the newer versions of Excel because there are areas in there which try to assist us but unfortunately um, it's not going to show your examiner exactly what needs to be in that cell. So then when you put it back into formula view you're not going to quite match the mark scheme. So do be aware if you are using the newest version of Excel then you may find that you have to write these manually. So the other thing that the newest version of Excel will try to do, this is the April 22 update, um, is it will also try to automatically duplicate all the way down um, your columns. Um, if it doesn't, then you grab that little square in the uh, lower right hand side and you drag all the way down. Um, even if it does duplicate for you, do double check the data. Now for this one, we need to insert a new formula into cell F3. And this is going to need to display the winning name in the format of surname, then a colon, then forename. So we're going to need to do a few things here. Um, the winning bidder name you can see there is in F3 or column F. We are going to use the winning bidder number to use a set of the lookups. Now notice here it says the word formula. Now formula in this case actually means a set of functions. Now we know it's a function because they are going to use a, a, a word rather than simple maths. So up here on cell F3 we want to select things from the bidder uh, sheet. And you can see there we have the bidder number, the forename, and also the surname. Now they're in separate, um, se separate columns, so we're going to have to do some kind of sticking those strings together, and that's known as concatenation. Now, inside cell F3, what we are going to do is we're going to start to try and pull that data in, and we're going to do this in small stages. So we're going to start with a V lookup, and we're just going to bring one cell in. Now you can see here, absolutely the same as again, it's uh, tried to use the new version of Excel. So here I've typed in manually E3, then popped a comma in, and then over here I have um, gone over to the bidder sheet and selected my data. Now notice here I'm selecting absolutely everything. Technically in this one you only need to select the first three columns. Um, so. I'm going to manually type this in again, so 173 bidder is the name of the sheet. I'm then going to put um, the name of the cell reference. If you can spot the mistake that I've made, make sure you make a note of it because we're going to come back to it later. So we're going to go from B2, in this case down to I41. Now technically it really does only need to be down to C41. Um, in order to get just the data we need, but it's not going to make that much of a difference. And we're also going to make the cell references absolute because the table data doesn't move. The next thing we do, we pop in a comma. The forename is in column two, and we're going to put false because it's not in alphabetical order. And then you can see that there is a problem with the formula. Now you might have actually already guessed this one. We actually need to have an exclamation mark in between the sheet name and the cell reference, not a comma. Now the first thing I noticed on this one is it came up with an error, even though I knew that everything was absolutely correct. And again, this is going to be one of the things that um, we are going to notice in the new version of Excel um, that you might find when you are importing data. So here, we're going to be using our VLOOKUP, and I'm going to have a look for, uh, so in this case, 35 should give us a TRAWGOP, I believe. Um, and there is actually a known bug in 2022 um, where numbers, when they are imported, are not formatting properly. Um, now, what we are going to have here is, you can see, um, 
We have our VLOOKUP which worked on the charity name. We can double check between that, make sure that we've not made any, um, any spelling errors. We double check that it's 173 bidder. Um, and you also want to make sure that your cell references are correct, just in case it's not this error. Unfortunately, the error that we found is that actually the winning bidder um, for 35, if you look at the numbers in the bidder number, they're all formatted to the right. And it's not just because I've right aligned them, it's because they are a number. Um, and in this one, if you look at uh, 35 and 10, they're aligned to the left. Now, aligned to the left means that it's text, even though I formatted them as a number. Um, and the way to get rid of this is to simply double click in every single cell and press enter. Unfortunately, that is the only way at the moment to convert it to a proper number. So what I did was to go all the way through. Let's speed that up a little bit. So now we have all of our numbers sorted, we can make sure that they are in the correct format. Um, I'm going to go to more number formats and I'm just going to make sure that um, my number is there. I have no decimal places and that's going to format the whole column. And you can see now I've turned it into a number, the VLOOKUP is working. So if you are finding this in the new version of Excel, um, do make sure that you are um, going to uh, make sure that your, uh, firstly, your VLOOKUPs look correct because you want to make sure that the whole thing is in there. So if it formats itself backwards into selecting the whole of a sheet, um, do make sure that you're actually showing the sheet name, exclamation mark, and then your cell references. Um, and then as soon as that's working, um, then you want to make sure that's pulling it all the way down. So I'm just popping those back in as an absolute cell reference, pressing enter, um, and knowing that I've got the correct data, I can now replicate that all the way down to the end of that column. So just be aware that there are a few little tweaks that you might need to make if you are on the latest version of Excel. Okay, now we have just one name. That's not the winning bidder. We actually need to have more than one. So we need to stick some strings together. We need to stick the surname and the forename together. And that is concatenation. So to concatenate, and actually the concatenate function, that will help us to stick those strings together. And because we've already worked out one, we can use the same VLOOKUP twice. So I'm going to use concatenate open up brackets and close the brackets at the end, just to make sure that I've got the right number of brackets. I'm then going to put a comma, and then I'm going to use double quotes to create my colon. Then I'm going to pop another comma, and what I'm going to do at that point is I'm then going to take my VLOOKUP that I created for the first name, and I'm going to copy and paste it within the function. I'm going to paste it after that final comma. Once it's pasted, I can then update that to the number three, because the number three is where the surname is. So I have here a concatenate, a VLOOKUP, stuck together with a colon, which is text, and another VLOOKUP. So let's have a look and see what happens. So that actually gave me something which is close, but not quite right. 
and you can see here this is what it actually looked like as a, a larger version um, you might want to drag that all the way down um, but looking at this a little bit more closely the issue that we had is that this gave us the forename first and then the surname now that's not what we've been asked for we have to be very very careful so knowing this what actually needed to happen was that I needed to move those VLOOKUP around so instead of two and then three it needs to go three for the surname then two for the forename um, and this one actually doesn't want to have anything after the fur or the, for the surname sorry um, then it, uh, straight away we want to have that colon So as we update that, we're going to update the first one. Um, I've actually done that a little bit further down uh, to double check it. Um, that's worked for that first one. And then I'm going to duplicate it all the way down or replicate it all the way down. And this is what I ended up with. So we end up with surname, colon, forename. So to concatenate is to stick those strings together. The strings are the first VLOOKUP for the surname, then a colon, then the second VLOOKUP for the forename.